I'm joined now by defending NASCAR Pinty Series champion Scott Steckley. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for coming out to my shop for uh, this interview. So first race out at CTMP, still looking for your first road course win, leading the race, then a wreck on the final lap. What was going through your mind at that moment? Uh, with about six to go, I thought, I didn't know if I would bail whole Andrew off and, and uh, I just knew I had to keep hitting my marks, not make any mistakes because he was right there. But I had three spotters around the track and they kept telling me, you know, two cars, three cars. So he wasn't gaining on me at all. So I thought I just, you know, had to hit my marks, make no mistakes. Uh, we got the white flag and looked in my mirror and he was still three cars back. And, and uh, I thought, well, maybe this, we can finally win one. But going into nine, I feel he got very over aggressive and, and uh, drove into the back of me. And from there, it was all over. Race two, Autodrome Chaudier, you're leading when a mechanical issue ends your race. Did the start of the season have a positive or negative effect on you and your team? Um, I think it was positive because, you know, we led so many laps at CTMP. Then we went to Chaudier with a brand new car. We led the most laps there. So as a performance standpoint, we were doing very, very well. Um, it was just, I guess we were down a, a bit because of the bad luck. but. Um, when you have performance that you're running up front the whole time, you know a win's gonna come and, and uh, our team's pretty good at staying high and not getting down on ourselves, so we just moved on. Western Swing, Edmonton, Saskatoon. You dominate winning both poles, both races, and leading every lap at Edmonton. How did that help your confidence? Uh, anytime you can win, it just makes you feel that much more confident. It, it, you never know when you're going to win your next race. So when you can lead all 300 laps like we did at Edmonton, it just makes you feel so much good, better as a driver. And you know your team's behind you 100% and it just raises, raises your confidence for the next race. These tracks seem to suit your style. Why is that? Um, I grew up racing on short tracks. I started at Varney Motor Speedway, which is a very, very uh, small quarter mile oval and from there Sobel Beach. So I, I, I always race the short tracks and, and I love racing on them and, and uh, I, they just seem to suit my style. I, um, I feel I'm a patient driver. I know when to, when to go and when to just hold back a bit and, and uh, save my car for the end. Fast forward to the season finale at Kawartha. Running second behind your championship rival but running where you need to be to win the title. How conservative were you those last several laps? Uh, pretty conservative. You know, going into that final race when we had to finish in the top five, uh, all that's going through your head is all the things that can happen that can break in the car, that you could get in a wreck or just, there's so many scenarios go through your mind. So uh, to get the pole was very important to lead a lap at the start. And we did that. We led the first, I believe, 60 laps. And then Jason uh, put some pressure on and, and got by me. And, and from there, we knew all we had to do was just not make any mistakes, stay in his bumper and, uh, and finish second. And that's what we did. When did it hit you that you won the championship? Uh, pretty much when we went across the start finish line, you know, as soon as you got that white flag, you know that uh, the race is over and we were running second. So uh, pretty much the minute we crossed the, the uh, start finish line for the checkered flag, I knew that we definitely had won the championship and it just, uh, it was an amazing, amazing feeling. How special was it to join a select group of NASCAR drivers with your fourth series title? Uh, it, it's, it's very rewarding. You know, it just, um, it makes you feel that you've accomplished something that, um, that only 33 other drivers have, has ever done. So you just got to thank all the people that have helped make that happen because there's no way I did any of it on my own. I've had a great group of crew members for 24 years that have always been behind me. Um, I've had a great group of sponsors for 24 years. So there's so many more people uh, involved that make it all happen. So you just got to thank all them people and be very grateful for their support. Yeah, you man, you've mentioned this throughout the season, the importance of teamwork. How important was teamwork in winning the championship? Uh, very important. It, you know, if like we talked earlier at the start of the race, if the crew after them first two races, if we would have got down and, and out and thought, you know, we're never going to win a championship, uh, things would have been totally different. But my crew guys stay pumped up the whole time and think that, you know, we can still come back and do this. We've done we've done it before and, and they stay positive and nobody, you know, nobody gets down and 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 just 
that's a very, very important part to have a very good crew that, that will stay pumped up and, and know that we can still get the job done. And then for your, what about your family? How special was it to have your family celebrating with you in victory lane? Uh, that's very rewarding. You know, they don't get to go to a lot of the races. They go to most of the Ontario races. Um, but to have my son and daughter, they're just getting old enough to, you know, to realize what's going on. They've always went to races with me when they were younger and stuff. But now being 11 and 14, they, at least they're old enough to see the accomplishment, to see the, the excitement that it brings for everybody. And, and uh, it's very rewarding to have a great family around me. Switching gears to 2016, why did you decide to sit out the first race? Um, basically, it's a financial decision. Um, in, about, in 2009, I turned this into more of a business as 22 racing than just me personally racing, where we started renting out cars to other teams and providing crew members, cars, trucking, the whole, we provide uh, everything a driver needs, they can show up and race. So, in 2009 we started that and and um it's grown and and we've had some very good luck with it mark dilly has was our first driver that drove one of our cars and he won in one of our cars lp dumlin won two races in our cars um, now alex tagliani has so it's very important for this business to grow and to be able uh run on its own without me racing i feel and for me to go and race without the proper funding would just be taking away from from the other teams that that are paying for the proper funding so um, it was basically a business decision that I, I needed to make to to make 22 racing uh, strong how difficult of a decision was it uh, it's definitely difficult but there comes a point where where I'm not going to be able to drive I'm not saying I was ready for this yet and I'm not saying I'm not going to drive if something wouldn't come along but but uh, if I want this to run as a business and, and to be successful, it, it was, I believe, the smartest thing to do right at this present time. So at what point do you start to think retirement, or are you still thinking drive for five? Uh, definitely not this year, but you never know what could happen uh, for 17. We're still looking for sponsorship and, and uh, partners, but um, just just the way the business operates, it's not fair for me to race without the same funding that the other teams all have. So um, I'm not saying I'll retire from driving anytime soon. I, you know, I might do four or five races this year, who, who knows for sure, but um, it, it's pretty hard to, to make plans and know what to do when, when uh, you don't have the proper sponsorship in place. So who will be driving cars for 22 racing in the season opener because your 22 car is still running? Uh, driving our the season opener in the 22 car is going to be Kaz Grala. He's a young up-and-coming racer. He races in the K&N series. He races in the Camping World Truck Series. Um, so our plan is to run the 22 car all season just with different drivers. So he's going to do the, both CTMPs. Um, Donald Teague from Quebec is going to do the first opener at Shoddy Air. And from there we'll see who ends up driving it at sunset. We're definitely trying to win an owner's championship with the 22 car. Um, it's going to be hard to do against the 18 car of Alex Tagliani, um, but he's back for the full season in, in the 18 car. He, he's going to miss the odd race, but his car will be in all the races. And then we have Brett Taylor from Calgary driving the 20, sorry, the 46 car um, as our third team. So, so uh, we're going to have a variety of drivers throughout the season and, and uh, you never know, hopefully I'll be able to do possibly Sunset or Riverside or Saskatoon, but we'll see what happens. You've got to go into the Western Swing races with your success there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It, it's basically, like I said earlier, earlier all uh, financial decision just to, to make the business profitable and, and to build run on its own. And, you know, I've, I've raced for 24 years, so if this is a time when it has to end, you know, I'm satisfied with what I've accomplished. I feel... I have nothing to prove winning four championships and as a driver, you know, I know it's with great teams and, and crew guys and sponsors, but um, I'm pretty satisfied with what I've accomplished. Do you feel you have anything still to accomplish in racing in general? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, sure, I know we could come back if we had the proper funding and win, win races or cha another championship, but um, 
I don't feel I have to prove anything as a driver or, or a team that, that we can't do it, so I'm pretty satisfied with what we have accomplished. As an owner, how important is it for you to grow your program and bring in more drivers and cars to your stable? Um, it, it's pretty important. It's not that we need more cars. I'm, I'd be happy with you know two full-time teams or three full-time teams at the most, but um, as an owner, I want to go out and I want our cars to win every race. You know, our goal last year at the start of the season was to, to win eight races as a team. Um, it was a pretty hefty goal, but, but uh, you know, Alex won, won one and he could have won a couple more and, and we won three and we could have won a couple more. So it wasn't really that far out of reach. It could have happened. So, um, you know, we'll set the goal again this season at eight races that we're trying to win as 22 racing organization and, and see what we can do. How difficult is the search for sponsorship for these teams? Uh, that's the most difficult part. You know, we've been, I've had great people trying to help me find sponsorship for the past year and a half, if not two years. And uh, it just in Canada right now, it is, it's very tough to, to come up with the proper funding to race these cars. It's very expensive to race. We, you know, going across Canada to B or to Calgary to, uh, or Edmonton, Saskatoon, Antigonish, Nova Scotia. So, and you're taking crew with you, um, you're flying places, it's just, it's very expensive and, and to obtain the proper funding is hard. Thank you. Defending NASCAR Pinty Series Champion and 22 Racing Owner, Scott Steckley, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much.